Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and welcome to this video. Before we get any further into this video, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee sells fresh, ethically sourced coffee from local American roasters. You take a short quiz online and fill out your preferences, how you like your coffee, how you make it, or if you want ground or whole beans, and they match you with a specific coffee suited to your needs and tastes. I personally love coffee, but I cannot drink caffeine because it gives me terrible migraines, so I drink decaf coffee, and Trade has a great selection of decaf coffees as well, and so it was really easy for me to to find a blend that I really loved. Lately, I've really been enjoying this Atomic Coffee Roasters Daydream blend. I really enjoy this. The flavor is incredible. It's good for like espressos, but it's also good if you kind of want to make yourself a latte as well, which is what I'll do sometimes. Trade makes it super easy to get the coffee to you. You can skip shipments or cancel any time and also change the frequency of when they're sending you your coffee. So it's very customizable to you and your needs. I really enjoy making myself a cup of coffee at home because it just feels really nice and comforting and I feel kind of fancy sometimes when I'm making coffee, <laughs> which is a nice feeling and trade makes that super easy because I get to try out flavors that I wouldn't necessarily always try, but I know will be something that I'm already inclined to like. So yeah, if you're interested in trade, right now trade is offering a total of $20 off your first three bags when you go to drinktrade.com slash clockwork or click the link in the description below. That's more than 16 cups of coffee for free. To get started, take their quiz at drinktrade.com slash clockwork and start your journey to your perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash clockwork for $20 off your first three bags. But again, a huge thank you to Trade for sponsoring this video. And now without any further ado, let's get into all of the books I've read recently. It's been a really long time since I've done a like monthly reading wrap up, but I've read a lot of books the past two months and the beginning of March as well. And unless you follow me on Goodreads or Storygraph, you probably don't know everything that I have read or how much I've read over the past couple months. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a wrap up of all the books that I've read recently and let you know my thoughts on them in general, because I've read some really amazing books so far this year and some really awful ones. <laughs> so this is gonna be a pretty chill, casual video. I have my coffee, I'm gonna sip this while we talk about all of the books and um, we're just gonna get into my little mini reviews for each of these so you can know what I've been reading so far this year. So I've read a total of 29 books so far this year, which is a lot more than I've read over the past couple of years. In 2020, I think I only read a total of like eight or nine books. And in 2021, I think I only read like a total of 20 something books. Really not a lot for me because I used to read like 50 50 plus books minimum every single year. So to have already read 29 books in the first two months of the year is a pretty big deal for me. I feel like my old self again. Like I feel like I'm getting my personality back. <laughs> And I feel like I owe a lot of the reading momentum that I've gotten and um, what really helped me get out of my slump to the first book that I read this year, which was a manga actually, and that is Yona of the Dawn. I talked about this in a book haul that I did recently where I hauled a bunch of manga because I've really just gotten into reading manga. I read a bunch already this year. Um, that's made up like maybe about half of the books I've read so far this year. And that all started because of Yona of the Dawn. So if you haven't heard me gush about this yet, go watch that video because I talked about it a lot in there, but I'll also talk about it here. I read the first 10 volumes of Yona of the Dawn. There are like 34 currently out, published right now in English, um, and I have like a lot of them, as you can see. <laughs> so this all started actually because I watched the anime for Yona of the Dawn, and it's just one season of the anime, and I was so upset that there was only one season of this show because it's so good and it deserves like 10 seasons um, and I just wanted more. So I decided to pick up the manga and I'm so glad I did because I am just utterly in love with this series. If you don't know what it's about, it takes place in a fantasy world that mixes the lore, history, and mythology of um, ancient China, Korea, and Japan. And it kind of just combines all those together into this fictional universe. And we follow around our main character, Princess Yona, as she has to flee her kingdom because of a circumstance that I'm not going to to tell you about because spoilers um with her bodyguard and she meets some more companions along the way that's all i really think you need to know about it apart from the fact that it's fantastic <laughs> it's so good it is some of the best like historical fantasy i have read about in a really really long time if you watch the show which i highly recommend that you do it feels to me so much like avatar the last airbender in terms of world building and character development the characters in here are incredible i'm in love with Yona. I love her as a main character. I sometimes have a really hard time with main characters, but she's amazing. I love her to death. She's incredible. And I love the romance in here. It is such a slow, slow burn. And I mean slow burn to the point where it's like agonizing, but I love it. And it's so good. So I highly, highly recommend checking out Yona of the Dawn if you want good historical fantasy, romance, action, adventure. 
character development, found family, like literally everything I love is in this series. So yeah, highly, highly recommend. Um, read Yona of the Dawn. Like I said, I've read the first 10 volumes so far. The show covers the first eight volumes and now I'm in the post-show content, which is really exciting. But yeah, I highly recommend it. I am so excited to continue on with the rest of the series, which I will be doing very soon. Five out of five stars for all of these for me. This is literally an absolute all-time favorite series now at this point. I can't gush about it enough. I just want everyone to to read it and I want us to get a second season. Like we deserve a second season of this anime and I don't know what I have to do but I'm gonna do something to make it happen. <laughs> Alright the next book that I read this year was Ain't Burned All the Bright by Jason Reynolds. I have read Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds uh, several years ago and I really really loved that book and ever since then I've wanted to read more books written by Jason Reynolds but I hadn't picked anything else up until I read this earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. This is a very unique book. It's not like a novel. It's kind of actually technically it's only three sentences. <laughs> it's um, difficult to describe so I'm just going to show you. It's actually a collaboration with the artist Jason Griffin and it's three very long sentences. So essentially it's kind of like a poem written by Jason Reynolds and then there are illustrations throughout the book that match the uh, story that Jason Reynolds is telling. And so it's really beautiful. It's a really interesting reading experience. It's unlike anything I've ever read before, um, but it was really good. This copy was gifted to me by Simon & Schuster. So thank you so much to them. But I um, am very grateful because I don't know that I would have picked it up if it hadn't been sent to me and it was just there. So I decided to pick it up. It's pretty much about the past few years of our lives. Probably one of the best discussions of COVID that I've read um, because it's not very like specific and direct. I feel like you could kind of take this out of the context of COVID and apply it to bigger picture things as well. It's obviously talking about like a specific situation and a specific time but at the same time it also has like a broader scope and I appreciate that because sometimes when things are a little bit too on the nose they get cheesy or they just don't age well um, and I think that this will because it's not that specific. It's also about the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020, very much about George Floyd, very much about a lot of the experiences that we've all had and witnessed over the past few years. And I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, Jason Reynolds really just has a way with words. He is truly such a good poet. And I will be reading more things that he has written because this and Long Way Down were both excellent. So if you're in the mood for something poetic, something a little bit different and artistic as well, highly, highly recommend trying this one out. And I gave this one a four out of five stars. Next up, I read another manga. Um, like I said, beginning of the year, pretty much all I was reading was like manga. So there's a lot of manga at the start of this, but um, this one ended up being a new all-time favorite as well. I loved this. And that is five centimeters per second. Yes, I know that there is a movie for this. No, I still have not seen it. So I will do that. I will be fixing that and watching the movie hopefully sometime soon because I loved this story. I will say I understand why some people don't like it. The ending is absolutely infuriating. I was so angry. I was ready to like throw the book across the room. However, I loved it. I don't really know how to describe it other than this follows the story of these two characters who meet in I think middle school. I'm pretty sure they're in middle school when they first meet and they become friends and their relationship starts to develop and eventually the girl ends up moving away and it's about them trying to like maintain this relationship, maintain contact with one another in a time prior to social media. So they would write letters back and forth to each other and I don't really know how to describe it any other way. It's just a book about about relationships and like I feel like this I, I feel like people are gonna get mad at me but I feel like this is what I wanted normal people to be I know that that book is still trying to do something different it's not trying to do the same thing that this book is trying to do but in terms of like emotion in terms of what I anticipated normal people to make me feel this made me feel what I thought that book would make me feel because this is also a book kind of about two people like miscommunicating or not exactly saying what they feel and it's frustrating and and it's hard to deal with but you also kind of understand how they got to this point and sometimes you don't understand how they got to this point and you want to shake them and just like tell them to get it together. It's very much a story about how someone can come into your life and shape you in such a profound way that it affects every other relationship you will ever have in your life and how you treat other people in those relationships and I I ate it up. I loved it. I loved it. It was so satisfying. It was infuriating and heart-wrenching. It made me cry a lot and I loved it. 
I, I truly loved it. So yeah, I, I would get if you didn't like it because it can be frustrating, but oh my God, I, I need to watch the movie and I need to read it all over again. So uh, yeah, easily I gave this five out of five stars, one of the best manga I have ever read so far. I know I haven't read that much, but as far as standalone manga goes, I tried to read like other standalone manga and like nothing has been as good as this so far. This was amazing. If you want a tearjerker, if you want something that will frustrate you, but will also really just make you feel so much. So yeah, highly recommend five centimeters per second. If you want to get into manga, try picking this up since it's low commitment, just one book pick it up, it's so good. Next, I read another standalone manga and that was She and Her Cat. This one I was not the biggest fan of. It's a pretty short manga and it's basically about this um, girl living alone with her cat. That's kind of it. And the story is told from the perspective of the cat. Like he is narrating a lot of the book and it switches back and forth sometimes. So sometimes you're getting more of her perspective and sometimes you're getting the cat's perspective. And it can be a little bit confusing sometimes, but for the most part, I just found this a little bit odd because sometimes it truly felt like her cat was actually in love with her in like a romantic way, which got a little bit uncomfortable from time to time. I don't know that that is necessarily what the book was actually trying to do, but it was just sometimes a little bit uncomfortable. And overall, I feel like the story kind of like missed for me and it just didn't give me that like emotional punch that I was expecting from it because I feel like it tried to build up the emotion, but ultimately kind of fell flat. And again, sometimes it just felt a little bit uncomfortable with the way certain things were described and sometimes the way the cat would talk about her. It was just odd. I gave this two out of five stars. Uh, definitely wouldn't really recommend it. I think there are definitely better standalone manga out there to read. All right, so the next book that I read was Blue It's by Maggie Nelson. This is a book of little vignettes, kind of essays. I, I don't know exactly what to call it, but it's basically a book about the color blue. It's mostly about love and loss relationships and the author's like personal emotions in the form of like an essay that's kind of like split up all of them somehow relating to the color blue and in concept I feel like I would love this I feel like I would eat this up and this is exactly the type of thing that's like a little bit pretentious but definitely my type of pretentious that I would enjoy however for me I don't think that it really landed I think the writing itself was beautiful however I just feel like at times it was a bit too confusing and sometimes I felt like it was just trying a little bit too hard. I don't really get what the book is trying to say and to be honest with you if I read something like this I want to be able to understand it fairly easily and I don't want to have to like struggle to figure out what the author is saying. That's not me trying to say I don't want to think about something critically. I feel like if you know me and the way I read I love thinking about things critically even if they're hard or confusing to understand at times um, but this just felt like a little bit too confusing. I ended up giving this like three out of five stars because I understand why somebody would like this. It's probably closer to like 2.5. I felt like some of the um, poems and stuff didn't really connect to each other very well. So sometimes it just felt like her thoughts were getting a little sidetracked and so I didn't really understand what she was saying sometimes. Some poems were really good and some of them just didn't really make much sense to me. And at the same time, I just feel like this wasn't for me. This isn't really the type of thing that I personally like, despite the fact that based on the concept. I thought it was going to be something I really love. So yeah, I think overall that this is just not my thing necessarily. And so that's why I didn't really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting reading experience, super short. I listened to this with the audiobook and I'm glad I read it. Um, so I know what people are talking about, but at the same time, I easily could have skipped it. And I feel like I really just didn't get much out of it. Okay, next up, I read a new all-time favorite book. And I can't believe it took me this long to finally read this book, but I did and I read it, and that is none other than The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I loved this. I loved it instantly, like my new favorite classic. It is so good. I've read The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. I was actually in the play when I was in high school, so I knew the story super well, and so I knew that I liked Oscar Wilde's writing. He's super funny, he's good at writing characters, and his work is just entertaining. So I've wanted to pick up The Picture of Dorian Gray for years and years now, and I just never got around to it until last month when I finally picked it up, and oh my god, I'm in love. I had no idea what the story was about. Like I literally didn't know anything. I'd never seen any of the movies. I didn't know a thing about it. So I didn't even know that it was like gothic 
horror. Like I didn't know that was even part of the story. And then I started reading the book and then we find out the actual plot of the story. And I was like, oh, there's murder in this. There's like gore and violence and horror in this. I had no idea. But it was honestly such a pleasant surprise because I really, really enjoyed it. And it was the perfect thing. It was exactly what I needed. And oh my God, I wish that he had more books. <laughs> I will be reading this again. This reignited like my love of classic literature. And I wanted to pick up so many other classics after I finished this, but I just haven't yet. And I definitely will be throughout the year. But yeah, I'm so glad that I read this. This was easily five out of five stars. One of my favorite things I've read so far this year. I'm obsessed with it. I did also watch the movie with Ben Barnes and it was awful. <laughs> I, I genuinely considered making an entire video about this, comparing the book to that 2009 adaptation, because oh my god, it was horrendous. <laughs> I watched it because one, I loved the book so much, and two, I saw that the cast had Colin Firth and Ben Barnes in it, and Ben Barnes was playing Dorian Gray. Like, of course I'm gonna watch this movie. It was so bad. I think it might be one of the worst book-to-movie adaptations I've ever seen in my entire life. It was offensive to the book. It missed the point of the story entirely, and oh my god, like, Seriously, I could literally rant about it for hours, but um, yeah, do not watch that movie. I don't know about the older movie. I haven't seen that one, but do not watch the 2009 movie if you've read the book or if you haven't read the book. Definitely read the book. Then maybe you can watch the movie if you want to laugh at it or compare it or something like that. But like, don't watch that movie. The movie's not good. Read the picture of Dorian Gray because the book is excellent. And oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, um, can't praise it enough. I'm obsessed with Dorian Gray. Um, I'm about to buy like five different editions of it because that's how much I liked it. I feel like this is going to spur like an entire like dark academia thing for me. I'm gonna get super into reading some more dark academia books because mm, that book was it. That book was so good. I loved it. <laughs> the next book that I read was Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This book is kind of exactly what the title says it is. It's basically just about this woman who works at a convenience store. And when I first read this, I gave it about three stars. Like I thought it was good, but like just okay and not something super memorable. And then a few days after I'd finished it, I kept thinking about it over and over and over again. And then I bumped my rating up to a four stars because honestly, I really, really liked this. This book is translated from Japanese. And lately I've been really getting into reading a lot of translated fiction. I've really enjoyed the translated books I've read so far this year. And this is definitely one of them. But yeah, this book basically follows the story of this woman who works in a convenience store. She's in her thirties. She's unmarried. She really doesn't have any like career aspirations or anything. She's just content to continue working in this convenience store, but she lives in a world that constantly has these expectations and puts these pressures on her of who she's supposed to be and how she's supposed to live, but she's very much content just being herself. And the story kind of just explores that idea and opens up the conversation of like, what is it like to live in a world that places these expectations on us and wants us to live this certain life when we may not necessarily want that or we don't fit into whatever that mold might be. And I loved it. It was so good. It was really, really short. But it was honestly really thought provoking. It was also pretty funny. And I loved the main character. Her family and people around her think that she's very odd, but honestly to me, she was really relatable. <laughs> and I really feel like this would make an incredible like indie film, like one of those like avant-garde kind of films. I feel like this would be so good for that. And if it doesn't exist already, it really should. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I'd highly recommend this if you want to pick up something super short that you can get through really, really fast. You can read it in like a couple hours, but you'll get so much out of it. I thought that the story had so much depth while also still being super lighthearted and something that's very thought provoking that leaves you thinking about it, like I said, for days after you finish it. And I love books like that. So yeah, easily four out of five stars for me. Honestly, like I might even like it more than that, but for now that's what we're sticking with. Um, yeah, very much enjoyed it and will definitely be picking up other books that she's written. Speaking of translated fiction, the next book that I read was Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. If you watched my um, I Read Five Sad Books video, then you know that I read A Man Called Uva and I loved that book. I really, really loved that book. And after reading that, I wanted to read some more books by Frederick Bachman and several of you suggested that I read Bear Town. And so I decided to pick that one up and I'm really glad that I did. And I will definitely be reading pretty much all of his books from now on. <laughs> Bear Town follows the story of this hockey town and the different people who live in this town. Some of them are the hockey players in the high school. Some of them are just other high school students. Some of them are their parents or the coaches. And it follows around all these different characters. But the core of the story is about one of the girls who goes to the high school who is sexually assaulted by one of the hockey players on the hockey team. I will say, nobody told me that before I started reading this book. 
um, which I feel like is an important content warning to know before you start reading this book. The main theme of this book is sexual assault, so know that before you read it. However, it is still an incredible book. It's so well written. I think it handles the subject really, really well, and it does so with a lot of grace and with a lot of empathy. And I will say at the beginning of the book, I was really enjoying it. In the middle, I thought it was a little bit slower, and then at the end, I really, really loved the ending. I've noticed that the endings of his books just really pick up for me, and they kind of make or break the book. And this one definitely made it. Um, similar to A Man Called Uva, I loved the ending of that book and I definitely like that one more than I like this. I gave that one like four stars when I read it. I feel like it's more like 4.5 now and this is definitely like a solid four stars. It was still really good and I will probably be reading the sequel as well. But yes, it was very difficult to read um, but still a meaningful story. So I would highly recommend it if you are okay with reading the subject matter because I think it's a beautifully told story. Okay, so the next like five books I read were all the books that I read in my most recent video, which was the I Read Five Popular Romance book books video. So yeah, um, these next five books are all of the books that I read there. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about them because I have a whole hour plus long video where I go into depth with every single one of these books. But yes, those books were The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. Quickly, briefly, I did not enjoy this. I think it's definitely overhyped um, and the writing was not my favorite. So I ended up giving this a two out of five stars. Definitely, personally, wouldn't recommend this one in terms of romance. The next one that I read was The Spanish Love Deception. Once again, I did not like this book. I gave this one out of five stars. If you really want to see me rant about it, you can go watch that other video. But yes, definitely wouldn't recommend. I do not understand why this book is as popular as it is. Then the next one I read was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This one I gave like 3.75 out of five stars. I definitely enjoyed this. This was my favorite one that I read in the video and I will definitely be reading other books by Emily Henry. A good friends to lovers story in my opinion. Um, just the ending wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. It wasn't as satisfying as I was hoping for it to be. So that's why it's not like a favorite, but definitely still a good romance and I would recommend it. Then the next romance I read was One Last Stop by Casey McQuist. In. This one I gave three stars. I feel like it had a lot of potential, but unfortunately for me, didn't live up to what I was expecting from a Casey McQuiston book. And then the last romance book I read for that video was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And this one I um, also gave three stars. This one I thought was pretty good as far as romance goes. Um, and I would recommend it if you're interested in reading romance, but it just wasn't personally my favorite. Didn't have like my favorite tropes or anything. So that's why it doesn't have like a super high rating. But then we get into probably probably what is my favorite book books that I've read so far this year. I don't want to say that for sure yet, but they're definitely up there. And that is the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. I'm in love with these. Oh my god, just obsessed. So I read volumes one through four. All of them are five out of five stars to me. I think they're so good. This series is literally a new all-time favorite. I would recommend it to everyone. I just want to read them all over again. Every single time I talk about them, I just feel so happy because I truly feel like these books healed something in me. If you happen to not know what the series is about. It is a graphic novel romance series about these two high school boys named Nick and Charlie and their relationship essentially and their friends and their whole friend group and everything and it's so good and so cute and so heartfelt. Oh my god, I cannot recommend it enough. This series also has one of the best depictions of mental illness, especially eating disorders that I've ever seen in my entire life, especially if you're gonna read volumes three and four. I would definitely put a content warning on it for um, eating disorders, mental health, mental illness, self-harm. So just like be aware of that before you read it. It's nothing super, super graphic, but it definitely talks about that stuff and I feel like it's good to know before you go into it. But truly it is so well done. And for me personally, like it felt so true to my own experiences in a lot of ways. I'm so excited for the TV show that is coming out and I cannot wait to watch it. I can't wait for the series to continue so I can read the rest of them. Many of you probably know that I already love Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. That's one of my favorite YA contemporaries ever. I'm obsessed with that book. Um, and I've read, I think like three, maybe three or two of Alice Oseman's other books as well. And I, enjoyed some of them and some of them I didn't really like very much, but this and Radio Silence are just so good. And this is probably now, it's been a while since I've read Radio Silence, but now this might be my favorite one. Just read Heartstopper if you haven't already. Oh my god, I'm so glad that I finally read it. So many of you have been telling me to read it for so long and I'm glad I finally listened because truly, truly it like healed something in me. It makes me so happy. And if you want to feel happy, just read Heartstopper. <laughs> All right, and then the next book I read was You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. This book is super popular right now and I've seen it all over uh, booktube and booktalk as well. It's a YA contemporary about this boy named Sam who recently died, narrated by his girlfriend who 
ends up getting a call one day from Sam and somehow she is talking to him again. And it's really a story about grief and love and loss. Everyone talks about how it's like super, super sad and it'll definitely make you cry. Personally, I thought the book was pretty okay. There were parts of it that I really liked. There were a few lines that I thought were really good and I thought the discussion of grief was well done and impactful at times, but other times it just like kind of fell a little bit short. I just don't think that this book is as emotional as it's presented to be or marketed as. I think that it's like definitely still like a good story and definitely something that people would enjoy and I wouldn't not recommend it necessarily, but I just don't think that it's as emotional as everyone acts like it is. <laughs> I've definitely read other YA books that deal with grief that I felt like were much more emotional than this one. I don't want to say that it was just my expectations that made me like it a little bit less. I feel like overall it was just like missing something and I don't really know what that is exactly. I wish I could give you an answer, but for me it just felt like it was missing something a little bit. So again, I gave this like three out of five stars. I think that it's a good book, but it wasn't really my favorite. So I would recommend it if it's something that you're interested in picking up, but maybe go into it with like slightly lower expectations that it probably won't be the most emotional thing you've ever read. All right, and then next up, I read another book that I would probably consider one of my favorite things I've read so far this year, and that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I know this book is super popular online. It's been popular for at least the last year. Everyone talks about it on booktube and on booktalk. I see it everywhere. I'm so glad that I read it because I loved it. I loved this book. I had no idea what it was about and I'm so glad that I didn't. But if you want to know, the book is about this coffee shop that can transport you back in time. And it's a really short book and it follows the story of a few different characters who are all somehow connected to one another who come into this coffee shop. Some of them work there, some of them are just patrons. And these different characters, for their varying different reasons, all want to travel back in time. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful, quiet, calm, peaceful, happy, but also definitely emotional story. And I loved it. Like I don't, I just don't even know what to say. It was so good. I definitely recommend it if you want something that will just make you feel warm, something that will make you think a bit and make you feel, but also not something that's super overwhelming. This is another translated book. And this one is probably my favorite out of every translated book I've read so far this year, because it's just so, so beautiful and so well done. I cannot wait to read the sequel. I think there's a sequel. I don't know if it's a sequel or if it's just more stories in the same world, but there's another book that's basically about the same coffee shop. And I will definitely be reading that as well because I loved this and I will read anything else that he's written as well, honestly, because this was just so good. Highly recommend. People were right about the hype with this one. They weren't lying this time. This recommendation, I, I can back this up. This is a hyped up book that has the Hannah seal of approval. Read it. It's so good. It is so worth it. All right. And then the very last book that I've read so far this year is The Girl from the Other side, which is another manga. I've only read volume one so far, but I loved this. This is a dark but also somehow lighthearted that is about this world where there are outsiders and insiders and the insiders hate the outsiders. You can see where this metaphor is going. <laughs> but it follows the story of this girl who is an insider, like a little girl who is abandoned and this outsider who is basically a demon, like the outsiders kind of like look like these monsters. Um, and so the insiders hate them and they're afraid of them. But this outsider is like taking care of her and caring for her since she has been abandoned. And I don't really know what else to say about it. Like it's just so cute and so happy, but at the same time, really sad and kind of graphic and like violent, you know, but it's still really, really good. And I will be like marathoning the rest of this series because I love it so far already. I gave this one a solid four out of five stars. I feel like I would give the whole series, depending on where it goes, probably a five stars. That's what it's leaning towards. But right now it's sitting at a four. Um, I really just really love this story and I'm very excited to continue on with the rest of the manga. But there you all have it. That is it for all of of the 29 books that I have read so far this year. Once again, a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to check out the link in my description box to check Trade out. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video, I would love to discuss them with you. So please leave all of your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. But again, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.